University of Calgary researcher is now part of an international study to evaluate a blood test for breast cancer detection. This could revolutionize breast cancer understanding and care in this city and this country. Joining us to explain her new research, welcome to the show, Dr. Christina Rinker, who is a professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering in the Schulich School of Engineering and the Department of Physiology and Pharmacology at the Cummings School of Medicine. Welcome to the show, Dr. Rinker. Thank you. It's great to be here. So you are part of this new project. It's not new, but this new funding part of it with Cornell University is is really going to potentially change the way we can figure out breast cancer. Can you tell me a little bit about your research and how this blood test could work? Yes. So uh, this project's been in development over the past decade. So we developed a new way of doing blood testing to find the signals in your blood that uh, signal the presence of breast cancer and early-stage breast cancer in this case. Uh, where this is important is there's, there's gaps in coverage. Uh, we're not detecting cancer as early as uh, we should or, or would enable better outcomes and survivability. So we have a new blood test platform that's been clinically validated in populations around the world. What this new funding enables us to do in partnership with Cornell University is to expand that population to more diverse populations and six more sites and 2,000 participants. So when when people have very limited knowledge, like I do, about the medical world, why is it such a long process to figure out if this blood test is going to be the way to do this? What What is so tricky about this? Well, the first part of it is the technology development. There's not currently any blood test that enables breast cancer screening, uh, we've been using imaging techniques for the past decades. So in order to develop a new platform, it did take uh, quite a few years to develop a new way of doing blood testing that had the sensitivity to enable early stage breast cancer detection. And there's a long path of validation. So you make sure that it measures what it's supposed to measure. You get all the, the um, approvals in place for the test. And then you work on clinical validation in different populations. And uh, so what we've done is we've um, we've gone through that process. Now we're expanding the populations for which the test is validated for and continuing to gather data to get towards reimbursement or procurement of the test. And for breast cancer, would this test replace an ultrasound and a mammogram or this would be a partner to those techniques? This is additional tool for the breast screening program. So right now there's initial screening that indicates if you need a follow-up image. So you get diagnostic imaging, uh, could be, you know, a mammogram, ultrasound, MRI in some cases. That's followed in some cases by a biopsy. And roughly 80% of biopsies are negative for the presence of breast cancer. So uh, as we push towards having more tools to enable early detection for all, also, uh, some efficiencies, I think, can be had in how this whole process works and identifying those that need to move forward into advanced procedures. Uh, right now, there's gaps. For example, women with dis- uh, increased tissue density, breast dense, uh, dense breast tissue, have a decreased sensitivity of uh, breast tumors by mammography. So this is an area where it's important for women to know what their density is, and this could be an additional tool to help in that process of identifying uh, any potential breast cancers early. So, sorry, are you also saying that this could eliminate some unnecessary biopsies as well, or it's part of that whole plan? Well, we need further studies to be able to evaluate the, um, you know, all the areas, the the pathways for which the test could be used. Right now we have gaps in our system that uh, uh, most women are not actually identified with breast cancer at the earliest invasive stage. Mm. And we want to increase that. So we need to increase access. We need tools that complement the current tools we have so that you can find the, use the right tools for the right patient at the right time. Well, and because, Dr. Rinker, I am of that age, I've had these many discussions about mammograms and ultrasounds. And one of the things I keep getting told is, you know, they're sort of uncomfortable and maybe you don't feel comfortable and maybe they're a little embarrassing and maybe they hurt a little bit. And there's a lot of women who are like, I don't want to necessarily be in pain, uncomfortable, shirt off. And so if there's any option that a blood test is going to help us move towards more inclusive care, then that's a fantastic thing. 
Yes. I mean, as a community, we need to continue to continue. We need to continue to push innovations and uh, additional clinical validations, participate in clinical studies, get the data that is needed to support the expansion of the use of these this test in particular, or these new technologies, and uh, improve the care for all women. So we need systems that work better. Uh, we, our existing system is saving lives, so that is a great system, but we can continue to strive to push that, push the envelope, and improve lives for and burdens and beyond. I do want to ask you one thing, because I spent some time on this today, and I could not come up with a short answer that I understood. So I'm going to ask you and put you on the spot. <laughs> Your research is being funded with Cornell University to the tune of $3 million Canadian dollars from the U.S. Department of Defense. Yes. <laughs> Why is the U.S. Department of Defense in the breast cancer research world? Well, this is an important topic. Um Military, first responders, uh, they're at an elevated risk for cancers. So there's a lot of interest and a lot of funding that's now available in developing tools to enable screening in these populations of women. So our blood tests can be collected remotely and shipped to processing labs to enable robust routine screening. And this is very attractive to the U.S. Department of Defense and other organizations. So we're looking to validate the test in populations relevant for the U.S. usage. So, so I mean, okay, U.S. Department of Defense funds this groundbreaking research, and then it can be applicable to the mom sitting at her kitchen table in Silver Springs in Calgary one day. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, Dr. Christina Rinker. Thank you very much.